Okay, this is gonna be a quick video about how I usually use my tool, how I handle my tool to carve a block. Okay, so first thing, um, make sure your blades are nice and um, sharp. Uh, I usually go hold it like this, almost like a pen. Um, I like to usually hold the block in some way. This one is not taped down anything, but when, I, when I'm working on a larger block, I usually tape it down because um, it gives me more, gives me my left hand to hold on to my blade and carve with extra precision. That's how I like doing it. Um, linoleum block in this uh, warmer temperature it seems to be uh, nice and soft enough that I don't have to apply too much pressure and it still carves really nicely so for these smaller pieces especially in the since I don't have a lot of space I've been carving and turning this around as I go and Another thing I want to mention is because the block is not taped down or anything, it's sliding around. I usually use my left hand to hold it down most of the time. And I find myself constantly holding in one way and carving directly in the direction of my finger. This is not recommended. Um, even I do it now and I feel like I'm not really comfortable because if anything happens, if I, if my blade slip, it'll jab right into my finger. That's holding it down and carving is not ideal in my opinion, but you see it a lot in my videos because, um, it's small enough. Um, it's manageable for me. So, so far I'm doing pretty okay. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, one of the prior, um, one of the common reasons for people to break their tools are just by dropping it. For tool sharpening, I usually look at um, uh, Daniel Jassa from McLean's. He has his own Instagram account. Uh, where he shows a lot of uh, tool sharpening tips and demos right there. Uh, you can also send your broken tools to him and he can sharpen enough for you professionally and ship it back to you. And I see a lot of my friends actually uh, asking him for that sharpening service. So if you don't want to mess it up, mess up your own knives, I would send it to him. <laughs> and get it done nicely. One thing I like doing usually is I don't want to use a lot of my wrist to carve. I usually hold my blade with both hands and slowly push um, with my body weight so that I'm not adding extra stress to my wrists. I don't wanna have any uh, wrist problems, so I'm trying to be really careful. Another tip will be do not rush. Um, work slower so that you're more comfortable. Um, the slower you go, the better precision you have in your carving, so I would not rush my carving process. Um, it is very time consuming, but I would usually listen to podcasts or audiobooks. So um, another way to uh, ruin your tools is lending it to your friends, possibly. So I have my own personal rules that in general, I do not lend my tools to uh, other people.
And um, one thing, another thing I want to mention for the for this V gouge in particular, since it has these two walls, right? Um, I've seen this happen, or I've seen people use it this way. Um, maybe it's okay uh, in certain materials if it's soft enough, but especially wood, something hardwood, if you're carving hardwood, you don't want to rock your uh, blade left and right when you're carving. Uh, I know it'll create this really cool ripple lines if you do it. But, let's see how that looks. But it'll add these extra stress to the sidewall that it's gonna potentially break or chip your blade. So I usually do not recommend doing this left and right rocking motion while you're carving, especially some harder materials. That's kind of like what I, that's kind of the basics that I focus on when I'm carving. And again, put some good tunes or, re, or listen to good book and get into the zone. Uh, chip away slowly. Keep carving, keep carving. Try to do as much, try to do a lot of carvings. Do not be discouraged after carving only one block and say, oh, this is not great. I'm not gonna continue working on this material or this process because I'm not good at it. You, everyone starts from zero, right? And then the more you do it, the more you understand the process. Um, even though I can verbally teach uh, what to do, what not to do, I think it's more most important is the amount of experience you gain from uh, diving into it and doing it yourself. I hope I was able to provide some tips for carving and I hope you guys will be will try these um, try this technique on your own. And I hope you enjoy it. It's a lot of, personally, this is one of my most preferred printmaking technique. Carving is, um, or relief printing is, something about carving, it's just like very soothing, but also exciting. Um, yeah, I really enjoy carving and once you start I think once you start carving or maybe any printmaking technique it'll complete I feel like it'll completely change the way you think about uh drawing or or any like visual process like um I always think about reverse or mirrored image thinking about creating an image it has this interesting effect to your brain, it almost create more depths in your um, uh, visual thought process or visual mapping.